Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video, I want to share with you two use cases for enums that you may not have thought of in the past. The first is to show you how you can use enums to present images made from SF symbols, and the second is to manage the presentation of multiple modal sheets. I discovered both of these via Twitter myself, and I'll have more to say about that in the video, along with giving credit to those two who tweeted about those techniques. In the meantime, if you really enjoy the video, please leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell to be notified of new videos. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. I've created a starter project for this video and you can download it from the link in the description below. It's a simple list view where two button actions have yet to be coded. We'll do this in the second part of the video. When I get to that part, I'll also go over the code in more detail so you can see what's going on. For this first technique, we're simply going to be replacing these two buttons and these resource types with images using SF symbols. The resource types are from a finite set that you'll see in our model. I'm keeping the code simple here, and in content view, you can see that the code that I want to replace with an image are these three text views here. One to represent the resource type, one for the edit button, and one for the new button. Now before I get to that, let me emphasize that what I'm going to show you here and in the next section are not concepts that I thought of myself. I learned these by following other developers on Twitter. If you don't use Twitter and follow active iOS devs there, you're really missing out. The Swift development community is fantastic, and devs are so willing to share what they know. This first idea stems from a tweet by Matej Kasparyralshik. My apologies to Matej if I'm mispronouncing his name. His Twitter handle is at mjk underscore is. And in this post, he shared a code snippet about using enums as Swift UI views. Let me show you what this means in practice. In your project, create a new file called SF Symbols or any name you prefer. Now I'm using SF symbols because the enum is going to represent an image using an SF symbol. Inside the file, create an enum of the same name and give it an associated type of string. For the cases, we'll list all the options that you want to use for your needs. In that case, it'll be a button for edit and new, so two cases here. Plus, we want to have one that will represent all of our different resource types. And those are blog, website, podcast, and YouTube. Now, this is a pretty typical enum. What I want to do now is also conform the SF symbol enum to the view protocol. So this means we first need to change the import to Swift UI. And now we can add view as a protocol conformance. And the view protocol has a requirement that there is a body property that returns some view. And the image we want is one that uses the system name. And for the system name, we're going to use the raw value of our SF symbols enum. Now, do you see the problem here? The issue here is that these cases strings raw values aren't names of SF symbols. We can, however, go to SF symbols and find ones that will represent what we are trying to convey and then assign those strings as the raw values for our cases. So for edit, I like square and pencil. So let me right click, copy the name, and I can paste that as my raw value for the edit case. For new, I like plus. For the blog, let me choose t.bubble.fill. For website, how about link.circle.fill. And for podcast, I'll choose mic or mic.circle.fill. And finally for YouTube, this arrow triangle dot right dot square dot fill, I think will meet my needs. 
Great. Now let me show you why I've done this. The advantage is that I'm going to be able to leverage code completion, and if I want to change the image at a later date, and I've used it in several places in my code, I only have to change it in one place here in my enum. Returning now to content view, I'll replace this text new by simply typing SF symbol followed by a period, and I'll get my choices. The one that I want is new. Now this is a little too small, so let's add a font size of Title 2. Similarly, for the Edit button, we'll replace Text Edit with an SF symbol. And of course, the one we choose is Edit. And this time, I'll give it a font size of Title 3. Now, to replace our resource types with icons, I can write a little function that has a resource.resource type as a parameter and returns an SF symbol, which is the image view. I can create a switch statement on the resource type and I'll let Xcode generate all of the cases for me. And for each case, I'll simply return the corresponding SF symbol for the resource type case. Now back in our for each loop, I'll replace this text view with a call to the function, passing in the resource.resource .resource type. Let me add a font modifier of large title. With code completion on my assets, I think this is pretty cool. If we go back to SF symbols once more, the body can return any type of view. This means that I can return any kind of view based on the raw value. For example, I can do something like this. I can return a completely different kind of view for a website type. For demonstration purposes, let's return a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 10 filled with a color of red. Otherwise, we'll just return our image as before. If I resume the canvas now, I see the rectangle for our two websites. Let's reset it back to just showing an image. And we can also guarantee that by specifying an image instead of some view. For the second tip, I'm going to share a tip I learned from a number of people, but was reemphasized recently in a tweet by Craig Clayton. In his tweet, he talks about how he controls all of his modal presentations using a struct and an enum with an associated value. He also gives credit to at the million or Thomas Ricoir, and apologies to Thomas if I'm messing up the pronunciation of his name. And in working through this first part of the tutorial, I've put my own twist on this method. But I know that Greg, being far more experienced than I am, has crafted it in a way that meets his needs perfectly. There's always more than one way of accomplishing the same thing. First, the problem. In content view, I see that I have two buttons where the actions are incomplete. When I tap on the plus button, I want to display a modal sheet that has no values in the form that I'll use to create a new resource entry. If I tap on the edit button, however, I want to present the form sheet and pass in the current resource so that I can edit the properties and then update it. Before I go over the problem, let me show you how the form is going to be displayed. In the resource form file, I see that I'm using a view model with an observed object that has a published property that corresponds to the properties in a resource, namely the name, URL, and the resource type. The ID is optional because it will be nil when I'm using the new action, but not nil when I'm editing. If it's nil, this initializer will be used. And when I'm editing, this one will be used, passing in the selected resource. The modal sheet that's presented will use this view model. So looking at the resource form view, we'll see that that view model is here, as well as the current array of resources, and it will populate the fields accordingly. I have two different previews, and the first one shows you what happens if I present the resource form view passing in the resource for editing. And the second one shows what it looks like if I'm creating a new one and no resource was passed in. 
The Cancel and Update Save buttons have actions that will either update the current resource, or create a new one, or dismiss the form. Note that there's no persistence in this example, so every time you run this app, you'll return to the starter set of resources. Now at the time of this video, I'm preparing another video series that will use this concept and include persistence, but that's not what this video is all about. So back in Content View, what do we need to do? Well, we'll need to present a sheet when someone taps on one of the buttons. And when we tap on the plus button, the resource form view is presented, passing in the resource form view model with no resource. When a row is tapped, the form is presented with the resource form view model, passing in the selected resource. Now, if you've been developing in Swift UI, you'll be familiar with the sheet method. And there are two different initializers for sheet. One that presents a sheet when a given condition is true, and the other when an optional binding is given a value. Now, the problem with the first option is that we want to have two different conditions, and this becomes problematic. We need to present basically two different kinds of sheets. Even though we're using the same form, what we pass to the form is different. And this is where we need to use that second method that uses a binding to some optional identifiable object. What I'd like to do is create a single enum that will handle the cases for every single one of the sheets that I'm going to present in my entire application. Currently, we only have two, but it's quite likely in a larger application, you could have multiple. So let me show you. First, create a new Swift file and call it modal type. Inside the file, create an enum of the same name that conforms to identifiable. Now I'm going to have two cases. The first one is create resource. And the second one is edit resource that has an associated value that will be a resource. And then to satisfy the identifiable requirement, I need an ID. So I'll simply create one that is of type string and switch on the cases returning a unique string for each one. So I'll just use a string representation of the case itself. Now what's so great about this is that I can add as many new cases as I need as my app grows. Some will need an associated value type and others may not. I don't care. So how can we use this? Let me return to content view. Well, in every view that we want to present a sheet, we'll need to create an optional state modal type variable and set it initially to nil. Then in our actions, we can set it to the appropriate type. So for the new button, we'll just assign it the create resource case. For the edit type, we can assign it the edit resource case, which requires an associated value, which will simply be the resource within our loop. This now gives us enough information to create our sheet method using the item content initializer. For the item, we can bind it to the modal type. The argument in the content closure is a modal type, so we'll name it that, and it returns a view, and which view to present will depend on what the modal type is. So we'll use a switch statement on our modal type. In the case of create resource, we'll present the resource form view passing in a resource form without a resource and a full set of resources which are bound to our resources state variable that we created at the top of this view. In the case of edit resource, we have an associated value that we'll call resource and then present the resource form view, this time passing in the resource form with our associated resource along with that binding. Let me preview this now. When I tap on the new button, the form is presented with no information waiting for me to fill it in. Perfect. When I tap on the edit button for one of the rows, the form is again presented, but this time with the fields populated by values from the resource. 
Now, this is just fine and it'll work nicely, but as I was putting this tutorial together, I realized that I can utilize something that I learned from the first example. I can conform our enum to a view and move this switch statement content into our enum's body property. Let me show you what I mean. First, let's cut out this switch statement so that I have it on my clipboard, and I'm going to return to my modal type enum. I'm going to conform it to view, so first we'll need to change the import to SwiftUI. Now I can add the view conformance, and that again is going to require me to create a computed body property that returns some view, and I'm just going to paste in the switch statements. And instead of modal type, it's going to be self. Of course, this is going to break things because in the case of create resource, we also need a binding to the resources which is our array of resource objects. Well, we can fix that by adding in an associated value for create resource as a binding of an array of resource. And then in the switch case, because we now have an associated value, we can use this associated value as the binding. To do this, we'll need access to it in our case, so I'll call it resources, which will be that binding. And because we defined it as a binding using the binding constructor, we can remove the dollar sign here, and that fixes the first case. In the second case, we'll need both the resource and the binding. Well, we already have the resource associated value, so let's just add the binding, which is the same as the one above. And there's nothing stopping us from having a tuple as an associated value. So we'll enclose these in brackets. So now this time our associated value is a tuple. So let's call it a resource tuple. And the resource is the first item, so dot zero. And the binding to the array will be the second item of the resource tuple. So resource tuple dot one. So now returning to content view, we'll need to provide those new associated values in our actions. So for the first New action will set modal type to create resource and our associated value is going to be our bound resources variable. For the edit action, we'll need to pass in the tuple containing the resource as well as the binding to the array like this. So back in our sheet method, this modal type is now a view and which view is determined by the switch statement in the enum. So this modal type is exactly what we need, so we can just present it. And if you like shorthand, we can even reduce this even further using the $0 syntax. Let's test this out. Let's run this in the simulator. I'm going to change this resource that is a website for Swift by Sundell, and I'm going to change it from a website to a blog, so we'll notice an icon change. So we'll tap on the edit button, and now I'll select blog and tap on update. Did you see the icon change? It's been updated. Let's test creating a new resource. How about one for my YouTube channel? I'll call it Stuart Lynch on YouTube. I'll assign the resource type as a YouTube resource, and I'll enter the URL. and save. Well, there you have it. I don't know about you, but both of these techniques have really cleaned up my code. I really want to emphasize here that I would not have discovered these techniques had I not followed Swift developers on Twitter. It's a resource that you can't live without.